Hello and welcome, everybody. Welcome to this special edition SIMTI Education webcast. The uh, topic today is Discover SIMTI Content in the SIMTI Digital Library. And we're pleased to have a special speaker with us today who I'll introduce momentarily. I am your host, Joel Welch, SIMTI's Director of Education. Uh, thank you for, for joining us on this webcast and uh, all webcasts, actually. Before we get too far along, I do want to thank our sponsors for Education Webcasts, and the sponsor is uh, AJA Video Systems. If you're traveling around and you see uh, any of these folks uh, in your travels, please take a moment to thank them for uh, their generous support because it, it, this, is, this is why we can bring SIMTI uh, webcasts to SIMTI members free of charge. I'd also like to thank the folks at IEEE. Uh, they not only um, support SIMTI's digital library, but they also provided our speaker today and helped to promote uh, uh, the uh, valuable content in the uh, SIMTI library. And um, what we're going to find today is the speaker is going to tell us not only how to uh, better utilize uh, and, and find content within the digital library, but probably provide some hints uh, and suggestions on how to uh, find your way around and, and more quickly um, find the content that you want. Our speaker today is uh, Jay Lynn Kelly. Jay Lynn is the Client Services Manager uh, at IEEE. She has done um, webcasts previously. I am going to press the magic button here to make her the presenter. And Jay Lynn, you should now have the floor. All right. Do you see my screen? Do indeed. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Joel, and thank you all for coming today. I'm going to start with a few slides about the SIMTI Digital Library and the content available in that digital library, and then I'll go into a live demo of the SIMTI Digital Library in the IEEE Explore Digital Library to give you some best practices uh, for finding SIMTI content. But IEEE is the world's largest professional membership association dedicated to advancing technological innovation and excellence for the benefit of humanity. And IEEE has partnered with the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers to be the exclusive host for the Complete Simply Digital Library. And SIMTI, the leader in the advancement of the art, science, and craft of the image, sound, and metadata ecosystem, is a professional membership association as well, dedicated to moving imagery education and engineering across the communications, technology, media, and entertainment industries. And the SIMTI Digital Library really focuses on innovative content and emerging technologies. But there is a deep back file, so should you need to look at the more foundation technologies, you can do that as well. And within the SIMTI Digital Library, you'll find all 800 plus SIMTI standards, as well as the SIMTI Motion Imaging Journal and the annual SIMTI Technical Conference Proceedings. So all of this content is available in the SIMTI Digital Library, which includes more than 24,000 full text documents. And if you've ever seen the color bars test pattern on your television, um, watched a movie in 3D, streamed content to your mobile device, then you've really seen the SIMTI standards in action. SIMTI standards touch nearly every piece of motion imaging content and ensures that content is seen and heard in the highest possible quality on any display. And SIMTI is a internationally recognized standards development body that was founded in 1916, and they add an average of 50 new standards each year. SIMTI content follows an image from glass to glass, which basically means from the time an image is captured to when it is displayed and everything in between, with a focus on creating and maintaining the quality of a digital image, as well as the experience, which has really become increasingly more important. And here you can see the wide range of broad subject areas SIMTI covers. But when we go into the live IEEE Explore demo, you'll see you have the ability to search in much more precise terminology to obtain just the documents that are relevant to your specific project or problem you're trying to solve. 
So SIMTI provides key research on creation and delivery of quality images. It opens business opportunities by using industry accepted standardized methods, describes state of the art workflows, encourages system interoperability of products within the marketplace, accelerates innovation by understanding the media technology landscape, and increases productivity by providing access to previous research, avoiding redundant efforts. And the SIMTI Digital Library is accessible via the IEEE Explore Digital Library at www.ieee.org forward slash IEEE Explore. And from there, users can browse SIMTI content and access their subscription seamlessly. There are a lot of synergies between SIMTI content and IEEE content, which is why it was a natural fit to host the SIMTI Digital Library on the IEEE Explore Digital Library. In case you're not familiar with IEEE, we are the world's largest technical membership association with more than 430,000 members around the world. And while IEEE is most known for electrical engineering and computer science, IEEE is actually made up of 39 technical societies, which cover a wide range of technical interests. One of those societies, for example, is the IEEE Broadcast Technology Society which publishes a lot of content on imaging, multimedia, consumer electronics, display technologies. So you can see that the IEEE content and SIMTI content really complement each other. And one of the benefits of having the SIMTI content commingled with the IEEE content is the power of aggregation. So you can see from a variety of sources side by side and get a broader perspective through interdisciplinary research. But we're going to go into Explore in a couple minutes, and you're going to see that you have a lot of control over what you look at or not look at and have this ability to refine your results. So some of the tips I'm going to show you today is how to get quickly and directly to the SIMTI content. But before we do that, I need to talk just briefly about linking your SIMTI account to an IEEE account. This is a one-time process that SIMTI members need to do in order to access their SIMTI benefits within IEEE Explore. So for example, if you're a SIMTI member, you get free access to the SIMTI journal, you get discounts to the SIMTI conference papers, but in order to access that content and take advantage of those discounts, you have to link your SIMTI member account to an IEEE personal account. And the way you do that is you start on the SIMTI website, SIMTI.org, look for the little person icon and select login from the drop down menu. Then simply log in with your SIMTI member uh, username and password. This will take you to a My Account page on SIMTI's website. And on the side here, you're going to see a link to IEEE linking. When you click on that, it takes you to a page again on the SIMTI website that just describes a little bit more about linking and why you need to link. And then you're going to have a link here to click on that allows you to create a new IEEE account or link an existing IEEE account. So what happens when you click on this is it takes you out to IEEE.org. And if you already have an IEEE personal account, you simply sign in here. And when you click the sign in, it seamlessly links those two accounts together. If you don't have one yet, it's a real simple process. You simply click the Create IEEE Account link here, and it just asks you for your name, email address, and to create a password. And then once you've done that, when you sign in, it's going to link those two accounts together. And how you know it worked is it should route you back to the SIMTI website, and you'll see this message that says IEEE linking is completed. So if you don't see this confirmation page, um, you haven't successfully linked, so make sure you see this page. All right, so we're going to go ahead now and switch over to the IEEE Explore demo portion. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Explore here on my screen. And if you happen to be in an organization that has an institutional subscription to the SIMTI Digital Library, when, and you're on site at that organization, typically what happens is when you come into IEEE Explore, 
you'll see an access provided by message here at the top of the page. As long as you see that, that means you've been authenticated with your institutional uh, subscription and you're going to get the full text access through that subscription. For SMPT members, you'll want to use this personal sign-in option here. You simply log in with that IEEE account that you created and linked to the SMPT account. So just remember, this is not your SMPT username and password. It's the IEEE account that you created and linked. But once you're logged in, either through your institutional subscription or your SMPTE member subscription, you can always go to this My Settings drop-down menu, click on What Can I Access, and this will show you what you have full text access to. So you can see I'm going to show you from the perspective of an institutional subscription that has full text access to all the SMPTE journal articles, conference papers, and standards. Now, in addition to logging in to get your SMPTE member benefits, logging in with that personal account also gives you access to some value-added personalization features, and we'll talk more about those um, in a few minutes. But I'm going to go ahead and click on the Explore logo here. Uh, that's how you can always quickly get back to the home page. And I'm going to start the demo with the browse options because if you want to download the latest issue of the SMPTE Motion Imaging Journal or you want to browse the table of contents from a recent SMPTE conference or you're looking to download a very specific SMPTE standard and you know the number, using the browse function in Explorer is the simplest way to do that. So that's why I'm going to start with browsing today. And you'll notice there is a prominent browse drop-down menu on every page in Explore, and it's organized by type of content. So let's start with this idea that I'm interested in the um, SMPTE Motion Imaging Journal. I would simply go to Browse, Journals and Magazines, and you'll notice it takes you to a page in the IEEE Explore Digital Library with all of the journals and magazines in Explore. So this is IEEE content, it's SMPTE content, it's other publishers and society content that we host. But you can very easily scroll down and look at this publisher option, we call these facets, select SMPTE, click apply refinement, and it's going to get you right to the SMPTE title. And if you click on Show Title History, you can easily see all of the previous titles for the SMPTE Journal, the dates, and this will help you if you're looking for content from a specific time frame or a specific journal to easily um, click on the title that you're looking for. You'll notice that you have an easy, quick link to get to the most recent issue. Or, though, if you click on the main journal title, it takes you to the journal homepage. And here on the journal homepage, uh, you'll see a little bit more about the journal. You'll see the current issues, table of contents and cover. And you'll see down at the bottom um, some different articles highlighted. So the most recently published articles, as well as the most popular articles, meaning the most downloaded articles from the previous month. You have some tabs here along the top. So if you click on current issue, it takes you right to the current issues table of contents. From here, you can download the entire issue at once, or as you scroll down, you can browse through the table of contents, you can search within the table of contents, you can narrow down by the different categories, by the different authors, and so on. So you have a variety of options here on the table of contents page. If you're looking for a past issue, you can use the drop-down menu to navigate to that specific volume and issue. And if you click on the About Journal tab, it's going to just give you a little bit more information about the journal. Uh, there's information that links you out to um, submitting a manuscript if you're interested in publishing with SMPT, contact information for the editors. And one of the newest features that we've added is if you want to just search within the SMPT Motion Imaging Journal, as long as you're on the Browse page for this title, you can just come up here to the top of the page, click this Search Within Publication option, and then enter your search terms here. So I'm just going to do a quick search as an example on compression. 
And you'll see when we get to the search results page that I've done a search for the term compression just within the Symphony Motion Imaging Journal and across all years for this journal title. So that's really the easiest way if you want to search just within a specific journal title. Browsing conferences works very similarly. So again, you'd go to Browse, Conference Publications. If you're looking for SIMTI, I recommend you just scroll down, select the Publisher option for SIMTI, click Apply Refinement. You'll see a list of all the SIMTI conferences available in the digital library. When you find the title you're interested in, if you click on the Show Title History, it will allow you to easily navigate to the Table of Contents page for a specific year. And then from here, again, you have the ability to search within, to narrow down by the different subject categories, by author, or to just browse through um, directly. And if you wanted to search just within this conference title, but across all years, you can also do that similarly to the way you do a journal search. But in this case, what you want to do is just click on the main title of the conference. So you're at the conference homepage as opposed to the individual year homepage. And you'll see there is a search this conference. So we can do the same thing we did a minute ago and just run a quick search on compression. And it's going to search across the SIMTI technical conference all years for that term. So that's a quick, easy way to search across a specific conference and all years of that conference. And then lastly in Browse is the Browsing Standards. So if you come into Browse Standards, it's going to default to IEEE, but all you have to do is click this SIMTI button. And then from here, you can easily browse the standards either by number or by topic. So if you're looking for a very specific standard or family of standards and you know the number, it's easy to just come in here, click the By Number tab, and let's say we were looking for 428. I have two options. I can either select the range, or I can just type in 428, click Search, and it pulls up all of the standard documents um, for 428. And I now have the ability to scroll through and find the specific standard I'm looking for, the specific version, et cetera. And I just click on the title to access the actual standard. Now, if I want to browse, though, the standards by simply topic areas, I just click this by topic tab. I'll see a drop down menu of all the different topical areas that I can sc scroll through, select the one I'm interested in. So, for example, audio, it will now narrow down to just the simply standards related to audio. And again, I do have some options on the side here to refine my browse. So if I'm only interested in, say, active standards, I can narrow down further. I can narrow down by the standard modifier or standard type. So if I'm looking specifically for standard docs as opposed to registered disclosure docs, um, engineering guidelines, things like that, I will have those different options. And I can even narrow down by publication year as well. All right, so I think we might have a question. And we do, Jay Lynn. Um, Barbara asks, uh, can you run through a search where the user starts from Google and finds a relevant SIMPTI article or standard, please? Sure. Um, so let's say we're going over here to uh, Google.com. And we want to um, find, you know, simply um, 428. We can just do a quick search here. And down here, you'll see you'll start seeing the IEEE Explore uh, results. Uh, so let's say we were interested in this one. We would simply just click it, and it'll seamlessly go straight over to the abstract page for that particular document in Explore. So all of the content is indexed in Google, so you'll be able to find it within Google, and it'll link straight into the IEEE Explore Digital Library um, for that content. 
All right, um, so I'm going to go back to the home page. Those were the easy ways to sort of browse SMPTE content. We do have a variety of options for searching the content, but before we get into searching, I did want to talk briefly about those personalization features because they can really add some value to your searching experience. So if you're logged in with your IEEE account here, so as you're a member, this is your IEEE account that you link to your SMPTE membership. Uh, if you're not an IEEE, I'm sorry, if you're not a SMPTE member, maybe you're a SMPTE institutional subscriber, you can set up a free personal account on Explore, though, to get access to these personalization features as well. But you need to be logged in with that personal account to access these. And they're all available via the My Settings drop-down menu. And one of the things you can do is set up your own personal search preferences. And there's two really um, important things that I think help uh, SMPTE users within these preferences. One is the default in Explore is to search across all the content. But if you really only want to search SMPTE content every time you come in, you can actually come in here and select just the SMPTE content in your preferences. Then you'll need to go down here to the bottom and click Update. And then each time you come in to explore and log in with that personal account, the default is going to be to just retrieve search results from SMPTE content. So that's one way to easily set up your preferences to get right to SMPTE content when you're searching and explore. Another thing that might be of value to uh, you guys is you'll notice in explore the default is also to do something called a metadata only search. And what that means is it's looking for your search terms within the metadata, not the full text of the document. So metadata is things like the document title, abstract, publication title, author name, date, but not, as I said, the full text. So if you're somebody who always wants to search for your search terms within the full body of the document, you might want to change your preferences to always default to a full text in metadata search. Now, a lot of people prefer doing metadata searches and full text searches depending on what they're doing. And you can certainly do that easily from the advanced search page, which I'll show you in a few minutes, so you can make those selections. Um, but you can set your preferences to have one or the other as the default. And again, the, the, if you don't make any changes, the default is a metadata only. Uh, there's a couple of other things, though, you'll notice. You have the ability to um, enter an email address to get alerts. You can set up your um, email alert format. You can designate how you want your search results sorted and displayed. The default is relevancy ranking. Some people prefer to always see the most recently published content at the top of their search results page. So if you want to change these defaults, you can certainly do this. But all of these things that you can do here you can also do just by um, refining your search results, which I'll show you as well. But wanted to make sure you guys were aware of this. If you make any changes, just click Update, and it'll apply every time you come in to Explore. Now, you notice I mentioned alerts. So that's one of the nice features of setting up the personal account is the ability to set up alerts. And there's two types of alerts. We have content alerts, and we have saved search alerts. So if we go to My Settings drop-down, click on Content Alerts, it defaults into journals and magazines. So from here, you can set up in a table of contents alert on any um, particular publication. Since the list can get long, I tend to like to do a quick Control F and find a SMPTE, for example. Simply click the checkbox next to the title here. As I go up to the top of the page, I can then click Update. And what happens now is each time the SMPTE journal is published and posted on Explore, I'm going to get an email with the table of contents in the body of the email. So it's a great way to be alerted as soon as the SMPTE journal is available on Explore. Uh, we also have other alerts you'll notice here. One of those is standards by version. So you can actually come in and set up an alert on a specific SMPTE standard. Again, you'll want to um, Click this SMPTE option here and see a list of all the SMPTE standards. Find whatever standard it is that you're interested in. Again, you simply click the checkbox and click Update. 
And that's how you'll get notified, like if a new version is published of that particular standard. It's a great way to, to make sure you're aware of what's happening with an individual standard. But in addition to the content alerts, you also have the ability to do what are called save search alerts. And save search alerts are really, um, you can think of them as topical or subject alerts. So it's a way to come in and just run a quick search on whatever topic you're interested in. So let's say I'm interested in digital cinema. I can just run a quick search on that topic. And then here on the search results page, I can just save it. And now I'll receive an email once a week on Wednesdays letting me know of any new content that's been added into Explore that meets my search criteria. So it's a great way to stay up to date on a particular topic of interest. So those are some of the personalization features that you might want to take advantage of and that will help you um, enhance your experience on the Explore Digital Library. Now, we talked about the fact that you can change your personal preferences to just search SMPTE content, but if you don't change those, there's a couple of other really quick, easy things you can do on the search results page to get right to that content. So one is, um, you'll notice here at the top, there is an option that says, show, my re show all results. So you can actually come in here, though, and just select my subscribed content. So if you as a SMPTE member have access to the SMPTE journal, it will just narrow down to that journal and any other free content that happens to be available on Explore. So it's just going to show you what you have access to, what you can download the full text PDF of. So that's one easy way. I'm going to go back, though, to all results real quick and show you that just like within the Browse option, as you scroll down, there's a variety of options to help you filter or refine your results. And one of those, again, is the publisher facet. So you can always quickly and easily narrow to just the SMPTE content here on your search results page as well. So now we're just seeing just the digital cinema content for SMPTE. And if I want to set the search alert to make sure it's only retrieving SMPTE content, I can actually save it here. because it will save any refinements I make. So I can actually um, save this here as well. Okay. And so now this search alert will only uh, show me any new content that's added into Explore from SMPTE on my topic. So again, there's just three easy ways to get right to the SMPTE content. One is to change your preferences to only search SMPTE content. The other is to narrow your search results to SMPTE. And you also have the ability, though, to narrow to your subscribed content only here on the search results page. A couple of other um, interesting features here on the search results page is, again, um, I mentioned the default sort is relevancy ranking. So when you're looking at the search results, it's sorting them based on your search criteria, and it's pulling the most relevant content to the top. But as I mentioned, sometimes people just want to see what's been published recently. If you're looking for what I call high impact articles, meaning articles that other people are using frequently in their research, you can also sort most cited by papers. And so now you'll see on the search results that the top article has been cited in 15 papers, the next one in six, and so on. So it's going to show you which documents were cited most frequently in other journal articles and conference papers. But we even track patent citations, which is the best indication to, you know, companies' R&D efforts. So this allows you to see which documents in your search results sort that have been cited most frequently in patents at the U.S. Patent Office, the Worldwide Intellectual Property Office, and the European um, Patent Office. So here you'll see we changed the sort, and now the first document has nine patent citations. We've got two, we've got one, and we can keep seeing how this um, descends from here. Okay. As we're looking through the search results, you'll notice anything that has this unlocked green lock, you're going to be able to access the full text of. That's a key, that's your indication that you are able to access this content. 
So you'll be able to go right to the full text PDF. Or if you click on the document title, it takes you to the abstract page for this particular article. You'll be able to see the full abstract here, uh, publication information. There are some tabs along the top, so if you want to browse the references, in other words, the bibliography for this particular paper, you can scroll through here. And for other SIMTI um, articles in the references, you'll see links right to the content. You can also browse the citations to see who has cited this particular document. So we have any IEEE publications that cited this article. Then we have any other publishers content that cited it. And this would be where you'd see the SIMTI citations. And then even any patent citations. And if you want to actually see more about the patent citations, it's uh, helpful to click on this view all, and then it allows you to actually display the abstract. You can see which particular company's patent this document was cited within. And if you want to go to the full text, you can link out to that right from here. So there's a lot of um, nice additional value added information here on the abstract page. But of course, from here, you can also download the full text PDF and it will uh, seamlessly open up here in your browser. And if you want to search within the PDF, you can always just use your control F here um, and do some searching within the PDF. You can also download the citation for this document. So if you're planning to cite any information from this article in another document, um, you'd want to cite it properly. And this download citations helps you do that. So you can download the citation for this article in plain text. And if we click on it, it will open it up here in a new window. And I can just simply highlight and copy and paste the citation into my document. Or I can also download it into um, BibTeX or RIS. These are formats for bibliographic management systems. So you can actually import them into a bibliographic management system, which will then help you um, format your citations in the proper format, depending on what style manual you're using. And you also have the ability to email a link of an article to a colleague or friend. So you can use the email function from here. It's just going to email the link, so they'll have to have access um, to the, con the full text content on their end, but um, you can actually recommend documents this way. All right, so I'm going to scroll back up to the top here. <clears throat> You'll notice the basic search bar appears at the top of the page. So it really follows you around throughout the site. So you can always start a new search from wherever you are. And again, the default search is a metadata only search unless you've changed your preferences. And it defaults to search all content. But you do have the ability to search by specific types of content here. And then there's also an author search option from here. So you can actually come in here and do a search by specific first or last name if you're looking for a very specific author. So for example, if I do G. Zachary, it's going to go out and look for any articles written by anybody with the first initial G last name Zachary. You'll notice um, just below the basic search bar is a link to the advanced search page. And the advanced search page is a guided way to do some more complex searching. There's a variety of things you can do here that you can't do on the basic search bar. And this page really does give you more control and allow you to be a little bit more precise with your searching. So this is really where I recommend most people do their searching. So again, because I haven't changed my preferences. The default is a metadata only search, but I can easily switch between metadata and full text and metadata here on the advanced search page. And the full text um, searching is really useful in a variety of instances. You know, maybe you're doing prior art searching for patents and you really need to make sure you discover every instance of a technology being discussed. This is helpful. Um, standards can be quite lengthy. So um, 
you know, it's difficult to write an abstract that reflects everything that's in a 100-page standard, right? So sometimes there's not a standard on a specific topic, but there's a section of a standard on that topic. And so if you do a full text search, you might be more likely to find a standard that covers that topic. Full text searching can also be helpful if you're looking for non-paper -pa content, right? Um, so, you know, messages from the editor, editor letters to the editor, um, lists of sustaining members that get published regularly by SMT, things like that. There's no real metadata associated with those beyond the titles. So uh, if you want to search that type of content, it can be helpful to do a full text of metadata search. You'll also notice, though, that you do have the ability to search within specific fields from the advanced search page, like the document title, author name, publication title, abstract, et cetera. And you can combine your search terms using what are known as Boolean operators or connectors. So you have a drop-down menu here with and or not. And and means you want all of your search terms, or means you want any of them. And not is a way to actually exclude a search term. So you can actually say, I only want documents that do not contain a particular term or phrase. And you'll notice you're not limited to just three search boxes. You can continue adding until you have a total of 10 here on the page. And below that, um, again, you have the ability to just search right here, just in front in your subscribed content, or you can just search within the SMPTE content, or you can just search within a specific type of content like standards. So you have a lot of um, ability here to look at exactly what you want. So I'm going to go ahead and do a search here with just my subscribed content. I'm going to search for over um, the top, and you'll notice I place this within quotes. So within Explore, if you enter two or more terms, it automatically ends them together. So it's going to look for all of the terms you've entered, but not necessarily as a phrase in that order. So if you want to designate an exact phrase, you put it in quotes. And one of the reasons I really like the advanced search page is the ability to use the OR operator to search by various synonyms, or in this case, to search by both the acronym and what it stands for to make sure I'm not missing anything. So I'm going to say over the top, or OTT, and buffering. And then from here, I can click search. And again, I started this search by just searching within my subscribed content. But if I wanted to broaden that out to all re results after I've looked at my subscribed content to see what else is being published on that topic, I can. I can also narrow down by type of content. I can add an additional search term to further narrow my results. And I have the ability to refine by things like publication year, author, author affiliation. So again, variety of options to help me drill down even further to get to exactly what I'm looking for. Also, uh, one of the newer features in Explore is the ability to download multiple PDFs. So you can actually come in here and select up to 10 PDFs in your search results set and download them all at once into an uh, zip file. So it's a nice way to be able to grab multiple PDFs at one time instead of downloading each individual uh, PDF. You also have the ability to export multiple citations at one time. So you don't have to go into each individual article and download the citation. If you're going to cite these three articles, you can download those three citations all at once. So a variety of things here on the search results page to help you uh, further narrow down and refine your results here. All right, I'm going to go back to the advanced search page. I did want to show you guys this author affiliation field. 
this is actually a really nice way to be able to search by a specific organization name to see what their authors are publishing on. So for example, we can do a search on Disney within the author affiliation. And now we can come in here and see the different um, publications they're doing. I typically sort newest first because I'm more interested in what they've written recently as opposed to say 10 years ago. But here I can get some ideas on what are the topics they're publishing on, which conferences they're presenting at. I can even use this author facet to see who some of the top published authors are, at least within the content that's available in the IEEE Explore Digital Library because it shows me the top 25 authors based on record count. So if you're searching on a topic, you can also do the same type of thing to see who the subject matter experts are or key researchers within an area. So it's going to show you who has the most number of search results um, in your search results. So that's one way um, people sometimes use the digital library is to see what a particular organization is publishing on. Sometimes it's a competitor, sometimes it's a potential partner or supplier, but it can just give you some insights into that organization and their key researchers. Now, most people can get what they need from the advanced search page, but I did want to point out that we do have two other search options. One is the command search. The other is the citation search. You can not only get to them from here, but you'll notice when you're on the advanced search page, there are tabs here. So one is the citation search. I personally call this a known item search. It's when you're looking for a very specific document, you can just come in here and fill in whatever field you happen to know about that document, and the search engine will do its best to find that specific document. Now, if there's multiple documents that meet your search criteria, it's going to retrieve more than one. So the more information, unique and accurate information you give it, the more likely it will be to find that specific document. And then we have a command search page. So the command search is really for people who like to do more command language searching. Um, if you want to type in your own operators like and or not, if you want to be in control of nesting, which is the concept of placing your search terms and operators within parentheses to designate the order in which they're processed, this is the page you want to do that on, not the basic search bar. The basic search bar is just that. It's for basic, simple searches like we did on digital cinema, so for a simple uh, topic. But if you, for example, wanted to do a little bit more um, complex searching, but you didn't want to use the drop-down menus on the advanced search page, this is a place you can come to do that. So you can do the same, similar types of searching, but you're in the control here. So I'm going to type in a quick example search and then I'll walk through it for you so you can see what I've done here. All right, so um, in this case, I've nested, again, placed my search terms and operators within parentheses to say I want either the term ultra high definition or the acronym UHD, and I want either TV or television, and I want any word that begins with I-M-M-E-R-S. So this would pick up immersion, immersive, all the variations of a word. Now, for most terms, IEEE Explorer will automatically find pluralized nouns, verb tenses, and British and American spelling variations for you. But you can use this asterisk wildcard to ensure that you're getting all variations of a word. And the asterisk stands for any or no character. It can be used at the end of a word like I did here. Or it can also even be used at the beginning of a word. So, for example, if you searched asterisk technology, it looked for any word that ends in technology. So it's biotechnology, nanotechnology, et cetera, right? And you can use it in the middle of a word as well. So it's the only wild card in Explore, and it can pretty much be used in any way. So we'll come up and see what we get here on our search results page. So you'll see here it picked up immersive. Trying to see if you could see some different um, variations of that word. Immersive here. And again, I'm doing a metadata only search. 
Um, so it's just going to be looking within the abstract document title, publication title, etc. But that's one way to do much more complex searches and be in complete control of the search functionality itself. And when you're on the command search page, you'll notice there are um, some search guidelines here. There's links out to our help files, and we even have some search examples for you. So you can um, learn more about that type of searching if you're interested. In. All right, so those were some of my tips and tricks for searching and browsing the SIMSI Digital Library. Before the presentation, they did ask people if they had questions, and I covered most of the questions we got in advance throughout today's session. Um, but one thing we didn't talk about was somebody had asked how easily to log in from any device. So I just wanted to spend a, a quick minute on that. The IEEE Explore Digital Library is mobile friendly. So you can open up IEEEexplore.ieee.org on any mobile device and log into it and search and view the full text. Um, obviously, sometimes you know reading PDFs isn't as useful uh, or as nice on a, a small mobile device, but you can also email the link of the article to yourself to download later on your desktop if you want. But in addition to that, we do also have um, the My Explore app. So if you'll hold on just a minute, I'll show you that real quick. All right, so the My Explore app is an app that you can download for free. And it's an easy way to stay current on new papers in your field of interest. So it's not an app that's the full digital library. It's an app for um, setting up alerts. Okay. So it's a really quick and simple setup. You just enter the terms you're interested in. There will be a, a drop-down menu to select from, and you simply create an alert. If you allow push notifications on your phone or mobile device, they'll pop up on your screen. Otherwise, you can just go in and see the new content within the app um, as you'd like. You can scan all the new alerts. And for any documents that you're interested in, you can actually save them to a folder. And that folder will then uh, replicate on the desktop version of Explore, so you can easily go in and access them. And the username and password for the My Explore a mobile app is the same uh, personal account that you set up on IEEE and linked your SIMSI account to. So, so you can log in with that same account, and it syncs up on the Explore desktop version as well as the My Explore app. Uh, this is a brand new app. We just launched it in the last couple of weeks. It's in beta, so you know, feel free to give it a try if you're interested and give us feedback, and we'll be continuing to improve it over time. All right, um, so I'll go ahead and see if we have any questions, comments, or feedback. Um, let's see. We do have one question. Um, is the app available for free to download? Yes, the app is free. You can get it from the um, the App Store, uh, whatever you have, Android mm -hmm. or iOS device. It's freely available. And again, when you're setting it up, just log in with your IEEE account. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I have a question, um, and uh, you may have, have covered it, but uh, for the journal, there are some people who want individual parts of the journal, and there are some people that want the full issue. Could you remind us how to download the full issue, please? Absolutely. All right. So hold on just a minute here, and I'll go back to Explore. All right, so when you're on the IEEE Explore Digital Library, uh, just simply go to Browse Journals and Magazines. Uh, easiest way to get to SIMSI, in my opinion, is to use the publisher facet here and just select SIMSI, click Apply Refinement. It's going to show you the current journal, and there's a link to the most recent issue, so you can jump right to that tab. 
And right from here, you just simply click Get Entire Issue Now. And it'll download the full cover to cover PDF for you. Great, thank you. Um, also, uh, SIMT members uh, do have access to the full 100 year archive of the SIMT journal. And uh, let's see, we do have a question from Ra Rahat. Um, could you repeat the name of the app, please? Yeah, it's My Explore, all one word. So M Y X P L O R E. Great, thank you. Um, also, uh, I invite our guests to uh, post any questions or uh, request anything that you would like to be able to do but not uh, quite sure how to go about doing it. Um, you can use the chat box and you can either say I have a verbal question or I would like to, or just type your question in the, in the question box. Um, Glenn says, I notice I sometimes receive notification that I've exceeded my download limit. How do I know what that limit is? Um, uh, so Joel, I'm going to ask you, do the SIMT members have a download limit? Not that I'm aware of. So Glenn, do you, do you have an institutional subscription? Um, Yeah, um, while he's uh, while he's uh, waiting to respond, uh, sometimes the uh, service provider, internet service provider, has a, a data limit that you may uh, ha um, experience. Um, but I'm not uh, aware of any data limit that Simti has put in place for download. And please, I. Uh, uh, let's see. He says uh, I'm both a Simti and IEEE member. Um, uh, okay, so so if you're an IEEE member and and you've purchased a member digital library on top of your membership, you do have a limit to what you get beyond your unlimited access. For the, um, uh, might be easiest if maybe Joel can send me your contact information. We can because I'm not sure exactly. That's the only thing I can think of where you might have a limit is if you have purchased a member, an IEEE member digital library on top of your IEEE membership. Okay, good. Yes, I'm happy to send Glenn's, uh, uh, Glenn's information. Um, uh, Rahat uh, wants to know if the digital library can be used via VPN. Um, yeah, no, there shouldn't be any issues with that. Again, I'm assuming you you must be talking um, about having an institutional subscription. So if your company and organization has provided the VPN IP ranges, then yes. So it all depends. Um, we use typically IP authentication for institutional subscriptions. And if we have those VPN IPs um, on your account, it will still authenticate you. Um, but for, for you know logging in as your member, um, there's no you know there should be no reason why you can't be on a VPN or not on a VPN if you're just logging in with your uh, member account. Thank you. Uh, next question comes from William. He says, uh, although my SIMT account is linked to Explore, when I'm on my institutional account in parentheses, MITRE, M-I-T-R-E, I do not see my SIMT content in what I can access. And um, just to confirm, you log in, not only do you have your institutional MITRE account, but on top of that, you log in with your linked account? And we'll give William a moment to type his response to that. Uh, he should uh, respond with a yes or a no or further explanation. Yeah, so if you're on MITRE, um, normally what happens right is you come in and it says access provided by and then MITRE. To get the SIMT, you would have to use the personal login on the side and log in with your linked account. And it should give you access to both. So if, it's, if you're doing that and it's not giving you access to both, um, let's get your contact information and, 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 and get our tech team to figure that out. And William responds, unfortunately, I cannot log in with my individual account when I'm in the institutional mode. Huh. Okay, that's the technical. You should be able to log in without any issues to your personal account. So, yeah, let's, let's get your contact information and figure that out offline. 
Okay, uh, we'll do that. I'll send that information. And uh, Rahat uh, asked the question, says, uh, sorry, but I forgot the app name. I uh, wonder if you could provide it one more time. Oh, sure. It's just my explore. I don't know if it would be easier to type it into a message to people, but it's all one word, M-Y-X-T-L-O-R-E. Very good. And I will go ahead and send that out to everybody in the chat box. And here you go. Um, the uh, name of the app is My Explore. It's in the chat, and so uh, you should be able to search for that. And I don't see any uh, additional questions, um, so uh, I'm thinking that perhaps uh, we are at the end of the webcast. Uh, any final uh, suggestions or any final words of wisdom that you would like to share with our guests? Yeah, so the last thing I would just end with is uh, under the Get Help, you can get submit a feedback ticket, a technical support ticket, and then we do have this resources and help section. So within here, you can find out a lot more about browsing and searching and working with the documents. Uh, we also have uh, tip sheets and um, user tips and things like that in here as well. So the resources and help section is a nice place to come if you want to get a refresher from anything we talked about today or you have some specific questions. And again, you can do that from Get Help, Resources and Help. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, what uh, we'll do now is just uh, switch over to the other computer and we want to um, thank our sponsors one more time and uh, uh, those sponsors are AJA Video Systems uh, again uh, for our regular SEMPTI education webcast. These are the folks that allow us to bring those uh, free of charge to SEMPTI members. This particular webcast will be made available to uh, everybody for free because it is uh, uh, helpful in helping people understand how to access SEMPTI content within its uh, digital library. Um, so uh, also want to thank IEEE and Jay Lynn for uh, providing this uh, wonderful webcast. Uh, I think it's very in, uh, informative and uh, it will get it uh, posted online as quickly as possible. So if there are no uh, additional questions, uh, we will call it a day. Thank you very much to our guests. Safe travels. Take care, and we'll see you next time.